Frugal Crafter. Today I have a project that I feel needs a foreword, if you will, because um, I found myself very frustrated with this project and I only have enough, had enough supplies to make two versions. And I knew I wanted to make two versions of a holiday ornament wreath because I know we have different supplies and I also wanted to kind of compare a couple different popular techniques for making these wreaths. Um, I did one wreath using a styrofoam form and I did one wreath using a wire form. And they're two very different techniques that yield different results. And I'm gonna go through my favorites and give you some tips and tricks right here now before you begin, before we begin, because um, like I said, I only had enough supplies to make two wreaths, so I didn't have a chance to make one, think about it, redesign it, go back in, um, and I found myself not enjoying the process, so I didn't really wanna do it again, even if I took that wreath apart. So the first one I did, it was the kind I didn't like as much and that was using a wire form and I have that one right here and it turned out all right the thing I like about it is that you do end up with a double-sided wreath when you use a wire form and I'll go into this a little bit in the video I probably won't show you too much of this because I didn't really uh, like this process so much but basically what you do is you use a piece of strong wire or you can um, bend like a coat hanger you can smooth it out and make a loop with that or you can buy a commercially made wire form um, I had, I already had a wire form and I picked it up for like a dollar at Rennie's last year and I used that and you slide your ornaments on and that's how you make this wreath. And um, the thing that's great about it is that you just slide them on and you're done. The problems that you can have with this wreath is that if you're using low quality ornaments and I didn't realize how poor quality mine were until I started this process is that the balls come off the caps and you have to go in and glue them back in. And the other thing I didn't like is that while you're putting these on, you may be going in a pattern, say you have four colors or four different shapes and you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as you slide them on. The way that they shift around the wire, you could have um, you know, three of the same color next to each other by the way they kind of stack up and shift around. Of course, if they're coming off the, uh, the, um, the hangers, you could always glue them back in in a different position, but it's still very frustrating to do that. Um, so bonus is you get a double-sided wreath with no effort and it's fairly quick. Um, the bad side is you want to make sure you have a higher quality ornament or pre-glue all of the caps onto your ornaments before you go. And I recommend you use shatterproof ornaments no matter which uh, type of wreath you're doing that way. If it drops, you're not going to break one ornament and then have the wreath completely ruined. Um, these, like I mentioned, I got at, I got these balls at AC Moore. And I thought they'd be pretty good quality because it was a drum of them that was regular price $30. Even though I paid $10 for them, I thought, well, they, if they're $30 ornaments, they should be decent. They weren't very good uh, for this type of project. And the caps are plastic on these, so um, it's not like you can just pinch them and make them grab the ornament tighter. You actually have to glue them in. And sometimes the actual hook snapped and I couldn't use the ornament, so that was kind of a bummer. I did actually go in and glue in a few of the smaller ones after because when I was stringing this on, I didn't put the smaller ones in because I didn't know how they would react. So I'm sure it's something that if you've done this type of wreath a lot and you've had practice, you'll get really good at it and you'll know how to layer up your ornaments so they look the best. But I found as a first timer, this was kind of frustrating and uh, you definitely want the higher quality ornaments. Otherwise you'll be frustrated with how much the balls fall off the hangers. So if you're going to do this kind, if you're determined to, I would pre-glue your caps onto your ornaments. So the kind I really liked um, was doing the styrofoam wreath method and I just used a, just a plain one. You can see this is single sided so you can see the form on the back. I just used a Dollar Tree styrofoam wreath ornament, uh, wreath form. And then I just went ahead and glued these around which you'll see in the video how I did that. This was very easy and it's a really sturdy feeling wreath. I don't feel like it's gonna shift around. It's gonna look the same no matter, like it's gonna look the same this year. I can pack it away, bring it out next year. It's still gonna look the same. Things aren't gonna shift around. And I really enjoyed this because you could use very inexpensive plastic ornaments. I got th these are the same ones I used on that, but this wasn't frustrating because I was gluing everyone in. You will want to have plenty of hot glue. Um, and I had actually two glue guns going because one would cool off and I just grabbed the other one and I just kept switching them out as I went. Uh, and I'll show you how to do these bows and everything, but it was a very, uh, a much easier and more pleasant process. And I just liked that I could place every item on this wreath exactly where I wanted it and I knew it wasn't going to move as I, um, you know, when I hung it, when I move it, moved it. In fact, when I picked this thing up after I was done, I tripped and stumbled with it and every ornament I hadn't glued to the ornament hanger fell off. I was so frustrated. So with that said, I'm going to show you how to make these two different types of wreaths, but you can kind of decide for yourself which is better for you. They each cost about 
um, about $13 to make for the cost of the wreath form and the ball. So, you know, same price, just depends on if you want it double-sided or not, because it is easier to do the double-sided wreath if you're doing this kind, and it takes fewer ornaments to do a double-sided. You can see this is actually bigger. So I know I kind of rambled a lot, sorry about that, but I wanted to let you know what you're getting yourself into if you decide to do this project. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how it's done. Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can make a Christmas bauble ornament wreath. The first way is probably the simplest, but I do have some tips and tricks um, and kind of troubleshooting to help you with this because as I was making this first one, I decided that I do not want to make another one this way and um, I'm going to kind of take you through what I learned. So these were the Christmas ornaments I got at AC Moore the other day, the uh, Nicole brand, and I got this big tube um, for $10, regular $30, and I thought, well, these are regular $30 they're going to be pretty good quality. Um, I was wrong. Good thing that they are shatterproof because as I was building this, the caps kept coming off and they were falling on the floor and it was very frustrating. The good thing about it is that as you're sliding these on, so what you do to make this wreath is you just take a, like a wreath form or you can bend a coat hanger into a circle or you can just use a really heavy duty wire. And what you do is you slide the ornaments, um, on the form and sometimes it's difficult to kind of figure out in what order they're gonna kind of come around the uh, the wreath form with so you could always kind of pull off an ornament and and swap it with another one so that's good um, but it's frustrating when you're putting this together to have these kind of fall apart and roll around I had to stop and re and glue a bunch of these in as I was going so if you're gonna do this um, I would plan on either having to re-glue some of these balls in or just to glue them all ahead of time so because of that I'm going to be showing you another method to do this. Um, so I used to wreath form because I already had this. I bought this last year at Rennie's. It was like 99 cents. I bought a ton of these and I hadn't used any of them. So I'm like, I'm going to use those. So what I did was if you have one of these, honestly, I would just use wire. But if you already have one of these, this, these are really heavy duty and they do hold their shape well. So that's good. What you want to do is take a hacksaw, just cut it right next to this little, um, this little nodule here. And the good thing is that those balls are not going to slide off on you while you're building your wreath because that could be very frustrating to you the ball sliding off the other end but you're basically just stringing on the balls I used all one size for this because I wanted to see how it was going to look but um, you could always add some other sizes in there too we're gonna use multiple sizes on the other wreath that I show you um, but you might want to just practice a few just you know start doing a big one and a little one do it try a couple different patterns and see what you like best so now that I have this broken open thing here which you also have an open thing if you used a coat hanger uh, you can twist it back together or what I'm actually going to do is take a piece of red duct tape and I'm just gonna tape that up and then that will give me a really great place to add my ribbon to and also it'll give me a kind of a smaller area where my wreath holder can um, can grab a hold of it so I'm just gonna get a little piece here And I am going to wrap that around. And since this is duck brand duct tape, it actually rips really well. Okay. And then I did go ahead and make a, um, a bow already on my bow maker. And I'll show you that at the end of the video, how I did that. And I do have, my husband makes these bow makers. I do have four in stock. If anybody is looking for a kind of a fun Christmas present for a crafter, just let me know because, um, because I do have four left. If anybody wanted to purchase any, they're uh, $20 plus $6 USA shipping. So now I'm going to find the little tails of my bow because it's not an actual tied bow. If you've ever seen me use one of these before, it's uh, it's made with loops. And I am going to tie this right here on the front of my wreath. And I'm just going to leave the um, ends that, well, I'll show you. We'll, you'll see. We'll see how we do that at the end of the video. I'm just going to tie this on, leaving my two long ends. You could also use a contrasting color, which would be really pretty and I'm going to snip that off with my ribbon scissors which I have misplaced of course because that's the kind of morning I'm having I've had balls rolling all over the place I've misplaced my scissors here we go no that I didn't misplace them I actually put them away that's that's what I did wrong I'm just going to snip that short and there was another long piece I'm going to snip that short too because that won't show and then I'm going to fluff my bow I haven't glued every one of these balls in, so probably some of them are going to uh, fall apart. So what I do, like if I'll take the innest, I did a triple loop bow, so I'm gonna take my inner bow, pull it up on either side, take my middle bow, pull it down on either side. And I will have my little 
pretty fluffy bow. And that's pretty easy, and that's gonna go over my mantle because there isn't a lot of hot glue involved, and I will put a picture of this on the video so you can see it. You could fuss with the balls a little bit and get them to hang exactly the way you want. And you might wanna put just a smidgen of glue on the back of your knot. This is something I like to do just because um, it keeps it from untangling and it will kind of help it from sliding around and it will keep the fraying down. So I just put a little glue in there so I don't have to worry about it. But there is that and that's ready to go over my fireplace. Okay, I'm beginning to think wreath making is not my forte, so we're going back to the drawing board again with the styrofoam wreath form, and this time I've decided I'm going to go with, with smaller ornaments for the center, and I am going to hot glue them in. I'm taking off the caps on these ornaments because if my first wreath was any indication, those suckers do not want to hold, so I'm not even going to tempt fate and try to get them to hold. So, if, But if they don't want to come off too easily, then I will... I will let it slide. Put a little glue there where they connect. Hopefully these will be in good. These smaller ornaments I picked up at the Dollar Tree and um, they were a dollar a tube for you know probably about a, a two and a half foot long tube of ornaments. This I don't think this is a very inexpensive craft because um, you probably want to get higher quality Christmas balls to do this with because the lower quality ones I got have been very frustrating to work with and the glitter's coming off on everything and I'm making a mess and I do not feel like I'm filled with the holiday spirit at the moment. Just try to make connection with the side of your wreath and the ball next to it while you're doing this so that you'll have a nice um, substantial base. Now this ornament, this wreath is going to be single-sided so this will be good to go on a wall or on a door that's not a, like a window door. Um, so keep that in mind. If you want something that's double-sided, the using the wire and string them on like the wreath form or the coat hanger is a better method for that. Just if you're doing the stringing it on a um, on a wire method, I would definitely pony up for a better quality ornament because it was very frustrating to do that with these cheapos. I think the dollar store ones are better than the Nicole ones. Actually, they don't the, they don't seem to be losing their caps quite as easily. So, um, so keep that in mind. I mean, they're they're actually I think they're a little more expensive because you have to buy individual tubes and there's not as many in the tubes. But um, but they do seem to be better quality than what I picked up at AC Moore. I usually love the quality of the products at AC Moore. I'm surprised that I got such a dud. But I've I've uh, I guess I should have expected for a ten dollar package of ornaments. I just thought because they were regular thirty dollars that I was, they were a higher quality. Live and learn. But at least they're shatterproof, so when your wreath falls apart, um, it's not hey, they won't all break on you. So bright side, right? Look for the bright sides. Oh, look at that! And that fits perfect right around this wreath form. This wreath form was um, actually I paid sixty nine cents for it because I got it at Martin's, but it is a Dollar Tree um, brand. It's the just the Greenbrier in the craft section is where you could find it. Um, they had ones with flatter surfaces too. I don't know if those work better or not. I already had these so uh, from last year, so this is what I'm using. Oh, success. Okay, we got that down. Awesome. All right, so now I'm thinking maybe I will go um, on the next round and do the bigger ones. And I don't think I'll bother removing the ornament things there because I'm not going to be gluing from that. I really don't want to glue just from the tips of the ornaments anyway because I think that... Um, I think that we'll have trouble if we do that because... Um, because it's not enough surface area. You want to have as much surface area as you can connecting these things. See? Lots of glue. I told you we're going to go through a lot of hot glue. Hopefully my glue gun doesn't doesn't crap out on me. It's feeling a little, uh, it's feeling like it wants to protest a little bit, which is not a good thing. Let's do that. It's got a blue and a silvery blue shiny, and then it's got matte blue and matte silver. So I'm just alternating, nothing too fancy there. 
for the next round, I'm going to use these snowball looking ones and I'm going to go in between the, um, the two large balls there. And I think I'm gonna have to go get a new glue gun because this one seems to be crapping out on me. So I'm just going to go all the way around just like that on this next round. And I'm going to go plug in another glue gun because I think I've asked too much of this already today. Okay, now we're going to go in between all the snowball ones with these red glitter ones. And um, I'm going to try to get um, adhesive on all the contacting points. So I'm just going to kind of get, I'm going to try to get, I think I'm actually going to put the glue on the adjacent things. This is really messy and just kind of push it in there. Um, so I'm going to do that for, for each one around here. They should be making contact. Oh, maybe I can. I just don't want, I don't want a bunch of glue that shows. We got dueling glue guns here. Um, let me see. Let's see if I can get that on that surface. On this surface. I'm working on a silicone mat because this is really messy. And I'm also going to glue around the bottom there. I feel like this glue gun doesn't want to perform much better. I don't know what my deal is. Maybe I don't have enough power going to that power strip that I'm using. But I'm going to go around and do these red ones in between all the snowball ones. And the last one here. I am liking this method so much more than, um, than stringing it on the wire. Maybe it's because I wasn't using a smooth wire. I was using a wreath form wire. But boy, this is so much nicer and I'm finding that the uh, it just feels so much more solid. This whole thing just is so solid and nice. Um, so don't worry about the hot glue strings. We're going to deal with that later. We're going to blast it with a heat tool or a hair dryer to deal with that. Uh, we do want to do a rim around the back here. Um, and that's just going to make it look finished. And it's going to actually add a little bit more girth to it. So it just seems a little more substantial than a nine inch wreath. And like I said, the back is going to be, you know, it's a mess, but nobody's going to see that. I do think flipping it over for this last step is going to be helpful. And I would just, um, I'm going to start going around and we're going to glue. We should be able to fit these big ones in between all the other ones. So we'll just go around in that pattern. Um, just alternate the colors you have for the bigger balls. You can use whatever colors you want. And the thing I do like about this versus the um, strung on method is that you can place your um, the colors exactly where you want them. So you don't have to worry about having two side by side same color if you don't want that. You just don't have that versatility when you're doing the um, when you're doing the other one. I like to alternate a matte and a shiny as I go. And it's okay if they don't touch on the sides. Just make sure that you're putting a good rim of um, the hot glue around so that it will make contact with stuff. You're not really going to see this, so don't worry about making it pretty. Just make sure you have enough. You're better off to have it kind of awful looking and secure than you are to, and I twist it to kind of make sure it grabs, than to um, go too light on it because you're afraid it's going to show. This is not going to show. This is the back. So you just want to keep on going around and put one in between every ball that you have on the rim. Okay, so this is what the back looks like and let's flip it over. We've got a quite a substantial wreath here. Um, so now we just need to decide whether we want to add any other little baubles in. Um, I can see a little bit of the green wreath form. That's not a huge deal. You could have wrapped that with red ribbon or tinsel if that bothered you, but um, I want to make sure that it was getting a really good contact with the, um, with the wreath form so I didn't. So I'm going to think about this. I'm going to place some of these around and see how I like the look of that. So I can just kind of set some of these in and see. It is really, I mean, you can get a lot in here. I'm skipping, I'm skipping around every other one because I do have two different types from the Dollar Tree here. Um, it's kind of like making a cake, really. It's, oh, you know what? I kind of like that. It kind of helps balance it out a little bit because I had a lot of things where it was like, um, I had two kind of like silvery colors next to each other. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue these down and then we'll see what we want to do for a bow. I don't know if I want another big bow like I did on the other one. So we'll have to see on that. Now you might have some areas that you need to clean up. Like here I got, when we're working on the back side of the wreath, a lot of times you, you can't see the front. So you might end up with some, um, glue spillover. So you can actually pick up 
peel off that glue, especially the shiny ones. It comes off really well in the shiny ones. If you have a really big glob, I would plan on that being where you're going to put your ribbon. But go ahead and go through and peel off any of the really bad... Um, any of the really bad glue spills. I actually just went around and put these kind of matte ones on there. I wanted to see if I like the look of it. I actually like them better without those um, those lighter gray ones. So what I'm going to do now to remove the glue strings is to use a heat tool. And this is just your Stamper's heat tool. And it will kind of just uh, make the make any kind of matte light colored glue just kind of go clear and hook to whatever is nearby and any of the strings it will just kind of make disappear which is uh, a really easy way to deal with them it's so much better than trying to go through and pick out the glue strings so that's good something easy in this project right now I'm going to show you how to do the bow I haven't decided if I want to put anything else on here I do have some little jingle bells that I could put in here you know here and there if I wanted to I'm just going to think on that for a minute and I'm going to work on my bow so um, if you don't have a bow tool, you can use whatever you whatever you have. You could use like a book or something like that to um, to measure out your ribbon. I've just got a little elastic on mine to hold my extra two pegs there. So I don't often use them, but it's nice to have them. Um, so what I'm going to do is take some wide satin ribbon. You can go, you can make your bow as many loops as you want. I think for this one, I did like a triple loop bow in the other one, but I think maybe this one will do a double loop bow. So you don't count this end here. You want to give it however many loops around. So if I just wanted a one loop bow, I'd give it one full loop around, not counting that in the middle. But I want a two looped bow, so I'm going around two complete times. Okay. And then I'm going to snip my ribbon so that I have some excess because we can use... Well, we don't really... We'll probably glue this, rib, this ribbon on, but if you want to tie it on, you want a little excess there so that you'll be able to tie it. So I've got two loops, I've got two loops. Now what I want to do is cut off a my tying ribbon and that's going to be long enough to do my tail as well. So I'm getting about a foot and a half because this is kind of wide. I want to make sure it's going to hang down low enough. And then in the middle, I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, so that I have a nice, um, I'll have a, have a nice narrower button in the center. And then what I'm going to do is just lay that over my ribbon, leaving that, that leftover piece in the back. I'm just going to pull that around. And I want even sides on the back. And I'm going to tie that in a double knot. So this double knot will be the back and the pretty little flat button will be the front. Okay, like that. So that's what we're going to have. If we want to just leave it as a regular uh, one loop bow, then, then we would have just wrapped it around once. I am going to go ahead and trim my ends. So I want to see how they want to hang so that they'll, they'll trim, they'll, um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do a V-notch just because this is satin ribbon and a V-notch will help it not fray. I'm going to do each side individually though. You might want to put a little fray check on that, but it's just going to be hung up as a decoration. It's probably fine. There, fray check or some white glue. And then, since I know I don't, I'm not going to be tying this onto something, I'm just going to glue it onto my, my wreath where I want it. I can actually trim this. And when we glue it down, it's going to give it the, uh, it's going to stop any of the knot from fraying or the knot from coming undone. So that's a regular bow. So then to fluff it, I would just, if you're going to have, you just make it the same on both sides. So if your inside is going up on one side, make your inside go up on the other side, just so it, you get a nice, um, symmetrical bow like that. And then we can glue that right on top of our wreath. So, you know, look for that really sloppy glue job that you did, you know, where find your sloppiest glue that you want to hide and then you can just glue that on top. Or you could glue it more in the middle. You could glue it on the bottom too. It's completely however, however you want it to be. I think that looks pretty good right there. So I think that's just where I'm going to glue it. I'm just going to do a little dab on the back. Um, hot glue is pretty forgiving. If you decide you change your mind and you want it somewhere else, you should be able to pull that off fairly easily, especially if you let it set up for a minute before you push it down. There. 
and that's all there is to that. So I'm going to go hang these up so you can see them all done. And um, I really think I like the method of the styrofoam ball uh, form a lot better because I feel like I have a much more stable wreath. I feel like it's not going to shift around, I'm not going to lose ornaments. The other one I'm really nervous about because of how many ornaments kind of came out of their little caps. But, um, but there you have it. It is still a pretty simple project and the higher quality ornaments you use, the better uh, results you'll probably get, at least in frustration wise. When it's all done, I think it'll be the same either way, but for your enjoyment while you're making it, you're going to have a better time if you're not frustrated with the process. I want to thank you so much for watching today. It was a lot of fun to bring this project to you. I've never done this before and um, I was very anxious to try it myself and I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and until next time, happy crafting!